Hello friends, welcome back to another video and Microsoft Flight Simulator. As you already know, World Update 12 is live and released. New Zealand uh, is brought to the sim with photogrammetry and satellite imagery etc. with a new famous flyer, the DHC-4 Caribou. In today's flight we are going to take a look at both and we will be flying the Caribou from Wellington in New Zealand to uh, a military base Okahae I believe uh, is the name and we will be flying manually because this aircraft doesn't have any autopilot and following VOR stations on our way to get to our destination we will start cold and dark start the aircraft this is no different than starting any GA aircraft it's pretty easy uh, and we will continue with the preparations and be on our way very shortly. Let's hop into the cockpit and let's get this started, shall we? Startup procedure is pretty straightforward. <coughs> it is no different than any other GA aircraft. And by the way, for the sake of the video, we will skip the engine run up. Uh, you, you probably know uh, the, the basic run up right now it's just checking the mags checking the prop uh the idle prop feathering etc so we will be skipping that so to start the engines our cargo door is open if you are curious to see right there but we will close it when we start the engines uh, the battery master is located here turn this on that will give us electrical power <clears throat> we verify the landing gear is down and three green. Flaps are retracted, which they are. Mags are off. Uh, control lock or gust lock is in place and locked. And prop levers and mixture is in the off position or fully back position, if you choose to call it that way. And we'll turn on the boost pumps but let's just unlock the gust lock and then that will give us enough room you can keep it on if you want to uh, that will not change anything in terms of how we start the engines or you can just uh, unlock it if you want to do it that way I will keep it on for now and give a little bit of throttle uh, mixture goes to full reach. Let's move the mixture levers to full reach position. Propellers goes full forward and the throttle is cracked open. What we will do next is we'll get our anti-collision light on, which is over here, right there. <coughs> uh, that's this one right here. You can turn the wing and tail lights on, that acts kind of a nav light, but it's daytime, so it wouldn't be necessary. And then, you can brighten this DME, but that's tied to the GPS we have here. If you are curious, uh, we have probably seen this, we have a GNS 430. We'll start the right engine first, so we'll put the boost pump to on position for both. We'll verify the generators are in the off position, which they are. Um, we will tur on, turn on the stator master. And then we'll come down here and put the starter to the right and then prime the right engine. It's not starting. It does start now. Oh, it doesn't start. And the reason is the mags. We didn't turn the mags on. Now mags are turned on. That's my bad, sorry guys. And this time it should start. There we go. <clears throat> In terms of sounds, I wish the engine startup sounds were a little bit more realistic, like the cuffs and the engines spinning and those sounds until it catches up. But it's okay, it's not super bad. We'll start the left engine too. 
and both engines are now running we, we can turn off the starter master we don't need to keep the starter on anymore and we can turn on our generators they are turned on now we can guard the switches and we can give a little bit of throttle unlock the gust lock and idle around 800 rpm that should be over here just 800 rpm we can go a little bit higher to a thousand rpm to warm up the engines and we can finally close our cargo doors so let's just close oh we need to turn the power on and close the cargo door and the ramp it takes some time for the cargo door to close it's kind of slow but I think uh, it's how it is in real life too so I remember watching a stream uh, of the developer talking about this and trying to get this not so slow for the sim but also uh, long enough to mimic the real life so I think that's what he tried to do there so they are now closed we can turn off and we can eventually close our cockpit door because we have oxygen if we are going to climb about 12,000 feet that door needs to be closed to provide oxygen to the cockpit but that's the engine startup uh, next thing is our navigation so we will track the runway heading uh, after takeoff and as I said there is no uh, there is no ILS so we will track outbound on course 341 so we can set our heading bug to 341 that's our heading and I probably need to get a little bit closer to show it to you guys so that's 34 that's roughly 341 so it doesn't need to be super precise I'll keep the yoke out of the way and now we can go ahead and taxi to runway 34 which is our departure runway and that runway is I believe over there so that's a little bit counterintuitive because the windsock says we will have a tailwind but let's just ignore it for the sake of the video and uh, we will just go to runway 24 a uh, 34 parking brake is here disengaged and we can add a little bit of throttle and she should get moving we will do an immediate right turn to get on the taxiway and we will be on our way very shortly uh, ground handling is actually really nice uh, it turns just fine uh, no, no big issues uh, in terms of getting her to taxi on the ground and turn and uh, find your way it's actually not bad or better than some other GA aircraft that I have seen so well, I'll go back to idle power she should roll with idle power and we will take this next left to track and get on the runway we can do an intersection takeoff this aircraft is a stall aircraft so we can use this intersection to take off but I will just go and do a full length takeoff while we are doing this we can go ahead and set our flaps for takeoff one thing I noticed in this aircraft is uh, I'll show you when we are at the runway I will stop momentarily to show you uh, the weight and balances it puts the CG 
out of limits no matter what you try and I'm assuming that's an issue that will be fixed with a future update or something but right now if you try to set your weights and balances using the simulators weights and balances menu your center of gravity will be way off uh, and in a dangerous position like it will be at the back of the aircraft which will make it very hard to trim the aircraft so I'm not gonna touch it for today's flight because I know it causes problems and I have tested that but I will show you what I mean uh, when we stop here momentarily for a second before our takeoff all right let's stop here and occupy the runway just a little bit we can turn on our landing lights taxi lights were already turned on I am trying to do a better lineup okay let's stop here so first things first we are going to track a VOR station on our destination and that VOR station is Palmerston VOR 113.40 so we will tune that to our NAV1 radio, 113.40, see if we are picking up the signal yet, no, but we should when we get up in the air. And the weights and balances, if you check this, if I try to add payload, the CG goes out of the limit. And making these changes is not going to get it back to where it needs to be so that's an issue that I have seen uh, with this aircraft that puts the CG out of limits and there is no way you are getting it back when you change it so we can reduce the fuel quantity hopefully we will have enough to get to our destination and that will hopefully get the CG back in limits and see that's that's the problem so you need to do that, do that, and the CG goes out of the way. But this, I'm not sure how you can resolve this. Now I already played with it, it's not going to. Let's reset, and that will put us back to where we are, and leave it like that. But, FYI, this is an issue. Alright, takeoff is pretty straightforward. We will increase the throttles I I'd like to stay in the green band because this aircraft can take off very quickly not to stress the engines I will not move the throttles beyond the red rpm uh, section over here and at around 70 miles uh, our airspeed indicator is kind of here it just shows a hundred increments so that's 100 150 200 250 300 etc so this is 50, 60, 70. Around here we will pull back on the stick or yoke and we will be up in the air. During takeoff the boost pumps will stay on and we will turn them off when we are up in the air. Increasing the throttles slowly. Remember this is a radial engine so you can't just crank the throttles all to takeoff power at once. You need to slowly intro increase the throttle. I am keeping a forward pressure on the yoke to keep the uh, nose wheel on the ground until we reach to the takeoff speed. So that is 50 knots, releasing the pressure on the stick, 60 knots. That is now 70 knots and we should be able to take off with this. So you see, this aircraft can take off very quickly on a very short runway which makes it a great aircraft to land to short strips, even grass strips. So, positive rate of climb, the gear is coming up. We will adjust the trim and maintain a 500 feet per minute climb. And we will just follow our heading bug to follow uh, the runway heading for a while until we pick the signal from that VOR station. So that is the plan. We will be climbing up to 12,000 feet or so, beyond 10,000. That is what I'm planning. And to be honest with you, this aircraft is a, a really fun aircraft to fly uh, manually without an autopilot. 
it just teaches you some other things that you don't usually get with the GA aircraft that has uh, autopilot. So let's pitch down. That's too high of a pitch. Uh, maintain a 500. Trimming is still like not, not super easy. In my experience, I'm not sure what yours looks like, but I still find it very hard to trim the aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then you just start drifting, 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 and uh, stuff goes out of the way. Okay, so we are still, uh, our flaps are zero, that's our flaps indicator, but I'm still not able to trim for a steady 500 feet per minute climb. For climb, we can pull the RPM back to 2400 RPM and then readjust our pitch and then the throttles can go to 40 inches of manifold pressure that should give us enough climb power and then let's just get to our heading but this is a little bit more steady I like the way it handles now and I don't like to make control inputs uh, instead of trimming the aircraft properly for a steady climb but looks like we are now on a steady climb, climbing nicely. It's a little bit bumpy ride, it's windy, and I'm not sure if it's happening to you as well, but uh, my aircrafts in sim uh, reacts terribly to the wind from drifting and requiring rudder input, aileron trim to maintain a steady uh, straight flight. Uh, so not sure how your experience is, but mine is, mine has been like that. So we should be trekking towards that mountain range in the distance. So I will make a little bit more right. But looks like we found the balance between vertical speed and indicated airspeed. So we will maintain this uh, turn towards right just a tiny bit more and then level the wings. So turn coordinator is going to be your best friend when flying this aircraft because as you see it kind of drifts to the left so I'd like to do some aileron trim and then now the pitch trim went haywire up and down hopefully it will stabilize and always banking to the left I'm not sure what is causing that I'm just trying to add some aileron trim and rudder trim to maintain a straight line and I have seen people not struggling as much on videos but I'm not sure if they are using any of the assistances that Microsoft Flight Simulator offers to users like the rudder uh, assist etc to mitigate this problem but all my uh, assistance settings are turned off so I'm not using any of them all right we should turn towards right to heading uh, 130 right now so I will roughly adjust the heading to 130 uh, one, not 130 I'm sorry 13 013 and let's Correct and level the wings. This should be roughly the heading we should be flying. Although we drifted away from our flight plan path, we should get back on it. And we should try to trim the aircraft for climb again. And you need to be looking to your instruments all the time and you can't just take your eyes away from uh, the cockpit to look for other things because then you will start uh, losing and drifting. And I'm still not ha happy with how the aircraft is trimmed. Even the turn coordinator is kind of, kind of shows like we are on a steady straight line aircraft still tends to drift to the left and bank to the left I'm not sure if it's the wind let me see uh, not too windy so we should keep turning right 
and we started to pick up the BOR so we will adjust our course to 013 over here so that's 01123 that should be our course and now we will fly the needle so it's on our right so we should keep turning to the right just a little bit more until we center that needle and that needle will come and I'm not sure if this is happening to you as well but my nav1 keeps spinning around like crazy uh, I'm not sure if that's a bug or something uh, conflicting with this uh, aircraft it doesn't seem to stay I'm not sure if it's trying to tell me that it is working by doing that I am not 100% sure but that has been my experience okay let's take a look at the turn coordinator uh, we are still uh, okay that's not I want I don't want to turn that much maintain a level flight or level the wings for a straight flight and I'm putting in some aileron trim to the left to keep the aircraft from turning that seems to work and we are climbing at roughly 500 feet per minute and the needle is now in the center we can now turn towards the needle I am following this arrow and trying to get that arrow in the middle so that we can track that BOR properly keep turning and that is now centered and we are flying towards that BOR oh my gosh this wee weather changes I need to try a different weather uh, or something that will hopefully uh, change this wind behavior I think it's the wind causing these issues see the aircraft is banking to the left without control input that I'm not happy about so I was expecting it to be a little bit more steady but it seems like it is not the case and we just lost the climb so we should keep climbing and the needle just goes again like that so so that's 500 feet and we are still drifting a little bit uh, that is better all right this should get us a straight line of sight uh, flight and see it's just jumping around because the wind is changing a lot from 16 knots that's a 16 knot gust that puts the aircraft into a terrible position and makes you lose your I'm, I'm pretty sure this is an issue with the live weather that's what I'm suspecting here it's just this, this uh, sudden changes in the wind direction and the magnitude is what makes it hard I'm gonna go back and try Rex weather to see if it solves this issue with the sim when it injects the weather and if it's a better experience but now we are on a steady flight uh, everything looks okay and there you have it the ground is kind of a little bit oversaturated in my opinion I'm not sure that's the satellite imagery and we are drifting I can't leave the cockpit uh, we are drifting uh, from our course so let's maintain the course I will fly like this and then bring you guys back when we are getting close to our destination I don't want to keep you guys over here but what I'm trying to do just to explain is keeping this needle at the center by turning towards the needle 
If it's on the left, I turn to the left to get it to, to the center. If it's on the right, I turn to the right to get it to the center. And when it's centered, I will maintain a level flight and follow this needle to keep the needle in the center. All right. Now we have kind of stabilized our at this direction of flight. <laughs> Excuse me. And we are climbing just fine. And the wind is like throwing us left to right, right to left. Uh, I'm not sure why. But as I said, I will try with the Rex weather to see if I'm still having these issues with the winds in the sim. You don't feel these in maybe like an airliner due to their uh, weight, but in a GA aircraft it's more evident that the, the wind changes are affecting how the aircraft behaves. We should be following this coastline uh, to get to our destination and we will eventually center the needle. It's coming closer so I'm just making small adjustments to the left to get back on course and that's about it. So you need to be alert and and fly due to not having an autopilot. The other thing I'd like to show is the DME over here. So right now it says we have 57 miles. That's how you read it. So this is the tenths and this is the once or uh, yeah, so you got the idea. So 56, 55, so that's how the DME works. And the needle is at the center and we are following accordingly. So now it's pitch, pitching down for no reason. And when you try to adjust your trim again, uh, it causes more issues because you were already trimmed and now you are just changing your trim because the wind changes direction very rapidly, throwing you from left to right. See? This is what I'm saying. That is not great, Microsoft. Please fix this. Okay, so there you have it. I'll bring you guys back when we are close. Welcome back friends, we are cruising and the ride is still bumpy as you are seeing and we need to plan for our descent so we will cut the throttles first to 15 inches of manifold pressure and the RPM to 2000 that should give us a steady descent at 1000 feet per minute couple things, auto feather comes on after takeoff which I forgot to mention and then the mixtures goes to auto lean after takeoff which I have done off screen so we are descending and we are going to descend down to 2300 feet to see the ride is still bumpy our next station is 117.10 so let's go and set it up to our now 2 117.10 and we are tr the wind is throwing us around like crazy look at this come on this is not this can't be right it's just nine knots of wind throwing us like this it is not super realistic I'm assuming this is an issue with the live weather if I switch to a weather preset I think we will be better or it might uh, solve these issues but I'm not going to do that right now so we need to descend down to 2500 slow the aircraft down I'm gonna cut the throttles even more and the uh, RPM should stay around 2000 and that should get us down quickly we will be doing an ILS, the frequency is 111.1 and the final approach course is 266. Oh my gosh, this wind is crazy. 
we will descend like this and maintain a steady descent if the wind lets us descend uh, we should be fine but it's just throwing us around like crazy if we take a look at the DME we are 12 miles away from the station so that should give us some time to get down if I can maintain a steady descent uh, rate uh, with the winds it's becoming a challenge because I have to push the nose down every time winds trying to push us up even though I am trimmed the wind is just causing all these issues just just be aware it's Microsoft live weather I guess is not doing great again it has been a challenge for me that should be the course we are following and we are dead on course now trying to get down as quickly as possible which requires me fighting with the aircraft a lot but uh, that's part of the fun I guess if the weather was not acting like this another thing your pedo heat is here I have not turned it on uh, because of the warm weather in New Zealand right now but you can uh, turn that on uh, prior to takeoff if you want to do that okay let's take a look at the DME 8 miles refine uh, uh, we are still descending not sure if we will get there on time we, we should be very close to the VOR and should be making the turn uh, here in a little bit because we will be overhead very shortly and how I can tell this needle will turn showing we are flying away from the VOR instead of an up arrow it will turn to a down arrow all right 5000 2500 to go I think we should be fine in terms of altitude and we will level off at 2300 that's the the ILS and the second uh, air radio should be picking up the other one no not that one let's keep descending and we will figure that out coming down to 4000 now the needle is moving that's natural because we are almost overhead and that needle will just move and then come back and that will show us that we are at least uh, flying away from the VOR that's when we will make the turn when that happens and we will be turning to our final approach course of 266 so let's go ahead and set our heading back to 266 so that's 25, 26, 265 and 266 so that's where we should be turning very shortly Okay, coming down to 3000 so we are good altitude wise we will trim and maintain try to maintain at least a level flight when we get down to 2300 it might change anytime now because the needle is all the way to the left and I'm looking at this arrow to change because we are still flying towards the VOR and this needle should turn backwards as well when we pass over so that's 2800 we should start uh, uh, reducing our descent rate a little bit and get down just like that Uh, radio altitude is going to be three to uh, three hundred thirty. So let's set it to roughly three hundred thirty and three thousand five hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, two thousand five hundred. And the needle is turning, so we are passing over the VOR as you see here. 
1400 we should start leveling off now and increase the trouble just a tiny bit that should level us off and now it's time to make that turn to our final approach course 266 and we should change the frequency to 117 decimal 1 all right there it is mm. let's not drop the altitude below 2300 That should give us the ILS. I'm trying to see the airfield and keep maintain the altitude all at the same time. And we need to set our final approach course here too, just to follow the ILS properly. So that's roughly the signal so it's on our right so let's turn right a little bit increase the power to climb a little bit to get back to 2300 and the wind is just giving me a lot of trouble here all right the needle is coming towards the center as you see And we are getting to 3,000, 2,300 back again. Oh, the wind, man. That's what makes it more challenging, I guess. Uh, we are looking good we shouldn't be climbing though if the wind was letting us so let's go full prop uh, when we are getting ready to land we will do that not not just now oh my gosh this this is so bumpy Okay, one, one, one decimal one ILS frequency now coming in. All right, and that's on our left a little bit, and that's the airport right there. And the way the ride becomes more bumpy. And we should keep descending. Okay, let's cut the throttles to 15 inches of manifold pressure. And that should give us the descent we need. There's the airport. Sorry about the bumper ride, guys. I didn't expect Microsoft weather, uh, live weather to be this bad in this flight. But we will maintain the needle at the center. That should give us what we need and we will get back on the glide slope this is the glide slope needle we are very 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 high right now so i'm cutting the throttles even more mixture goes to full reach and we should get back on glide i'm gonna put one notch of flaps to help with the uh, slowing aircraft down okay looks better I'm trying to trim even if I'm not successful because of how the weather is acting up on me let's just get us down back on the glide slope 
and that's how you execute an ILS with without an autopilot. We are still too high. I'm gonna force descending a little bit faster until I see the mid needle moving. And from now on we can do visual for the rest of the landing. I'm just trying to get back on the glide slope. And sometimes they are they can be off in Microsoft Flight Simulator too. And look how wind is throwing us around and that's not even like more than six knots. Okay, the needle started coming up. It's shallow the descent rate and try to maintain the glide slope. I'm just using all kinds of rudder aileron whatever is needed to keep the aircraft on the profile. They are still high. Right, we are on profile now. Another notch of flaps, gear is coming down. And we can go full flaps from here. It's going to be a bumpy landing. I hope we can manage that. Now I am just controlling my speed to stay on the profile. Whew, this has been challenging, I'm telling you. Finally, looks like we are on the correct path into the runway. All right. It's cutting the throttle slowly. Let her settle down. Pitch the nose up to get the gear on the ground. There we go. Now we are on the ground. No need for reversers. We will roll like this and take the next right out of the runway. Manual braking right now, slowing the aircraft down and taking this exit out of the runway to vacate the runway. Landing lights are coming off now. And we will take this left to get ourselves to the parking position. We can bring the flaps up now. Auto feather can go go to off. And we will go and find ourselves a parking spot. Oh welcome to Ohayeka. Ohayeka? Ohayeka, I guess is how it's pronounced. A military airport. We can use a little bit more trouble and get to the parking. All right, this is better. At least we came uh, and landed safely. It was a very bumpy ride, I'm telling you. I'm going to test this with a different weather application to see if I'm having the same problems. And let me know how your experience is, if you are having the same issues with Microsoft uh, live, Flight Simulator's live weather. I'd like to hear from you, because uh, for the last two, three flights I did with the Caribou was exactly like this, and the aircraft was thrown from left to right, uh, even with the slightest wind. So I wasn't, I'm not sure what's causing this but uh, it happened. So we will take this second left turn to get ourselves to a parking position and we will park somewhere over here maybe uh, or maybe somewhere over there. Not sure which ones are the parking spots. Uh, this seems like a parking spot, I'm not sure. We'll just go and park like this. Slow down and turn around. And maybe stop here, like this. Alright. Parking brake is on. 
and we can pull the mixture back to shut the engines down throttles are idle and then we'll just put the gust lock in place you can open the doors if you want to but that's what not uh, what I'm going to do. Taxi light can come off. All the lights actually can come off now. And you can just leave the battery power on for the time being. But welcome to Ohieka Airport in New Zealand. And I hope you enjoyed this video with the DHC4 Caribou. And I'm hoping to see you again in the next uh, in the next video in a future flight. Thanks for being here with me today.